Thank you for joining me. I'm Kali, and I'll be leading you through this 10-minute energizing yoga practice. It's meant to give you a burst of energy so you can get on about your day. This is pretty much the daily routine or the morning routine, I guess. Get up with the sun, do a little yoga, have some vitamins. Basically, if you don't get up with the sun, it's a thousand degrees <laughs> the rest of the day, so it's kind of hard to work out. And this is just such a magical time with the birds and no people and no other boats. It's just a wonderful time to be awake and on a boat. Mornings are the best. <laughs> Very far commute. <laughs> this place is the whole reason that we are here and in this bay. And no, it is not for the water part, but we'll get to that. So this is Ocean Adventures and where we are right now, the whole bay, the bay that we are moored up in right now, is a marine park and it's all essentially owned by Ocean Adventure. And there's no anchoring, no fishing, no boating within this bay because it's a marine park. And what looks like a water park here, well, it is a water park, but there's so many other things going on. Really, really cool stuff. The Philippines are home to some of the world's rarest animals. There's such rich biodiversity here that it's one of the world's mega diverse countries. And no, I didn't just make that up. The country houses around 53,000 species of plants and animals, and half of them can't be found anywhere else in the world. And behind this theme park is a massive rescue and rehabilitation center with a full team of environmentalists and conservationists. Good morning. That is Enzo. Enzo. Yeah, he's a bottlenose dolphin. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> lunchtime. So the trainer said they check them and inspect them when they feed, generally making sure they look okay, they interact okay. Do you feel like you have the best job in the whole world? Yeah. <laughs> I said they just love to do tricks. So even if it's just a little wave, or a little spin. They like challenges and that's kind of what this whole feeding process is about. It's just like you would with a, a dog or a cat or any sort of animal you might be um, taking care of. Everybody calls you Doc Leo, right? Yeah, or you just call me Leo. Yeah, Leo, easier. okay, yeah. all right, well, fine. <laughs> Doc Leo, so much fun. <laughs> okay, well, this is Doc Leo or Leo. And he's the head of veterinarian services here, and he is going to introduce us to all of his. Would you call these your patients, your friends? Like, what do you call well, these guys? I don't know. I guess we call them our resident rescue dolphins. Okay. That one's Valentina. She's a spinner dolphin. <laughs> they called her Valentina because she stranded on the eve of Valentine's Day. And then we have Maxine. Maxine is a pygmy killer whale. He just stranded uh, two years ago. And then we have Sam. Sam is a pantropical spotted dolphin, and he was rescued back in 2004. So he's been here for 20 years now. Wow! Yeah, that's Marshy. He's a rough toothed dolphin. We just rescued him last year. And what's yeah. Marshy's story? We suspect there's a dynamite blast victim. That's when somebody who was dynamite fishing. Yes. And these guys would have been close by. And is that legal here? It is illegal. Okay. But it, is it still... doesn't mean people don't still do it. Yeah, which exactly. is super frustrating, right? Yeah. And once there's a blast and then there's a, like a sudden change in the pressure around the head, then that causes the hair to fracture. And once that's fractured, that's already permanent. Which is why they now need to become residents because they can't, they can't survive. survive out in the wild without their sonar, without echolocation. They will not be able to navigate, they won't be able to communicate or avoid predators. Oof. So their chances of survival out in the wild is... Just you know, not, yeah, it's none, not yeah. You're so sweet, hi! Oh, I love you too! <laughs> <laughs> they are so friendly and every time we walk by, this is exactly what happens. Yeah. Breaks your heart, because they're so sweet. <laughs> hi! Hi, why would anyone... Oh, I know! <laughs> <laughs> it's not every day that you get a selfie with the dolphin no. who's like actively Bye. trying to get a selfie with you. Bye. So as I mentioned before, this entire bay is all a protected area. 
which is why we are on a mooring because there is no anchoring here and there is no fishing here, but they still do want you to enjoy the ocean. This is a very popular dive spot because right next to us is a 300 foot sunken ship built in 1919. It lived many lives, including being in World War II. It is sitting down there at about 75 feet with like one portion of it being at only 15 feet. So it's a pretty big range and it's mostly intact, meaning you can kind of swim through the entire thing. And uh, we are gonna try to free dive that. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna go because it's been almost a year and a half since we've been scuba or free diving. Free diving was definitely our favorite way to explore underwater because it feels like you're entering a different world and you know, you're, you're unobstructed, you're free. There's, there's really nothing on you. It's just, just you and your mind down there. Back in the day, it would have been no problem to dive this ship, free dive it. But now we have to be realistic with ourselves. I mean, the reality is it's gonna take us quite a bit of time to get back to where we were. And definitely a lot of practice. So any pro will tell you that dry training is better than wet training. <laughs> Bird poop. Dry poop. <laughs> so preparing ourselves for free diving, things like yoga, breath work, meditation are all very good because the key to any diving is relaxation. If our muscles are tense, then that's eating up oxygen, which is definitely gonna affect our bottom time. And if we are anxious or scared or nervous, well, it's just not gonna go very well. If you've scuba dived and you've ever had any trouble getting down, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Because the more anxious you are, the harder it is to get down. Yeah. And one of us has actually been really good about getting up and doing yoga every single morning. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> So Jason's probably gonna have a leg up on me, but before we go hop in the water, it's good to sit down and do just a quick little bit of breath work, which means we'll probably have a better dive. And that's also where today's sponsor, Headspace, comes in. And I absolutely love this app. So I'm very excited that they're today's sponsor because it is just so comprehensive for all things when it comes to creating some headspace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are just too many aspects to cover when it comes to headspace, but there are four main categories that are on the top of the explore page. And those are the ones that we use the most because while well, there's movement, which is great for like exercises and yoga. Which is what I did this morning. Yeah. And then I did not, <laughs> I slept in. <laughs> Music, which I like their playlists for focus because they're like 45 to 60 minutes, which is perfect. Cause it's also my reminder at the end of the playlist that I need to get up Stretch. and move. Yeah, exactly. Or breathe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there is sleep cast or the sleep section is what originally got me to sign up for Headspace and I love the sleep cast. Hello Cat Marina. Yeah. Thanks for joining. If you have trouble getting to sleep or staying asleep that I, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, but the one we need right now is going to be under the meditation section which is guided breath work. I'm definitely going to need it with all this wind. I'm already starting to get anxious. <laughs> <laughs> and there are a lot of different styles but I like the ones with no people are talking, just visuals. It's incredible how much I can feel my heartbeat slow down and my body relax with even a 60 second session. And breathing is a seemingly simple thing, but a quick exercise like this, if you're super stressed or mentally exhausted, can be immensely beneficial. If you have never tried Headspace or anything like this before, then now is the time, especially because you can try it out free for 60 days. All you have to do is sign up with the link down in the description box below or scan the QR code on the screen. Okay. The free trial is how we got hooked quite a while back. Yeah. So there's no risk to check it out and uh, let us know what you think.
We did not do that dive justice. We didn't time it right because we missed low tide and slack tide. And uh, the wind, I guess, stirred up the water quite a bit. So, oh well, we didn't get to see the wreck, but it was pretty always, creepy down there. It was super creepy. Yeah. I mean, no, no, no amount of breath work you do to relax yourself can prepare you for the creepiness when there's no visibility. Um, but maybe we'll try again another time because for now we got somewhere else we got to be before they close. So we bounced over to Wynn, it's wildlife in need, and they rescue local animals that need help and rehabilitation, but they also have animals that are confiscated by the authorities from around the world that aren't supposed to be here. So this place is pretty unique, especially considering we're on an island. How in the heck did yeah. you get here? Jeez. Some of the animals here are victims of illegal pet trade. They get confiscated and then they are surrendered to us. We have to accommodate them and care for them. Yeah. But since it's a non-profit organization, the budget will always be a concern. Yeah. <laughs> so I will show you around. Um, I have with me, of course, Angie. She basically grew up here <laughs> wow. ever since she's a teenager. <laughs> we currently have like 10 ball pythons and we have two Burmese pythons and one boa. How did they end up here? Illegal <laughs> country. Uh, yeah. All confiscated. All confiscated. If, if we know they are from here, the goal is to release them back to the wild. But we have to make sure that um, it's holistically assessed. So we, co uh, we coordinate with our veterinarians from Ocean Adventure. Uh, you've met them, yes, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So Doc Leia and then Doc Adrian. So Wynn works really closely with Ocean Adventure to help take care of some of the animals that can't be released back into the wild, especially ones that are endangered or good candidates for their educational programs, like these insanely adorable bear cats. Oh, who knew even such a thing existed? I can definitely see why somebody would want to scoop them up and take them home. So all of our animals here at Ocean Adventure are sick, injured, abandoned, and nursed back to good health. <laughs> so we are promoting here at Ocean Adventure that we don't take wild animals as a pet. Instead, choose domestic animals instead. All right? That's so right. That's all. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, Bye guys. Because these are the local monkeys, right? Long-tailed monkeys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, don't look, look Is how that the camera? <laughs> look how cute I am. Oh. I get why people want to take them home. Yeah. Monkeys, they're running clicks in social circles, so they have to keep them separate. Otherwise, obviously, they would just fight all the time. But each one of these, which this one and this one right over here, are both right about to be released. So people end up getting them when they're babies, and they think, oh, they're cute, so they take them, want to turn them into pets, but then they get older get complicated and they don't want them anymore so they kind of prepare them get them ready to go back out into the wild but they have to find a place to do that right they can't drop them in on somebody else's territory so it takes a lot of time and effort just to even find a safe spot to release them back out into the wild so i just it's a lot of labor love we do the process gradually not just okay release them yeah <laughs> and then, then we're done no we always visit the, the location every day, if I'm not mistaken, uh, at times twice a day, and then we would oh, okay. leave food. So eventually, and then we will slowly fade out. So the process is, is really long. It's yeah. not just, you know. Alpha, so he alpha? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> alpha. Because these all come in individually, right? Uh, each one was somebody's idea of a pet that didn't work out. So then they have to kind of create these social structures for them so that they can release them back out. That little baby got bold. Oh, yeah. Hi, <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you keep distracting him over there. I'll, I'll, I'll just get another one over here. Whoop. So each one of these comes in individually. They follow a protocol to introduce them to each other. And that's how they kind of form their little social structures here. So even though they're just right next to each other, these are like different little social groups. It's very interesting. <laughs> it's got too quick. Yeah. So we also try to just so they won't um, Literally it's okay. Yeah. You think Gaspar? Gaspar You thought he put in. You got it? So in there was 
cloud rats and they are so cute they don't look like rats they kind of look like possums but cuter wow so and they're native here um, somebody had just found those they didn't know what they were and they brought them here so they have to basically quarantine them then reintroduce them back into the wild so it's crazy come on in this is the aviary it's wild to think that so many of these cute majestic and slightly intimidating creatures are living in the forest right here, can be found nowhere else in the world, and are considered critically endangered, like this warty pig. If somebody brought these in, yes. He may be a bit punk rock for some, but he still plays an important role in the ecosystem. Uh -huh. Ooh. <laughs> So these are flying foxes, which if you remember back when we were in Tonga, we rescued one off at the top of a mast that had gotten its wing pierced on the anemometer. Well, memory. <laughs> The flying foxes are native, right? Yes, they are. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We can actually take you later. Oh, around five or six feet? Yeah. We have a road here going to the uh, residential area. So in the morning, it's like they are leaves of trees. But then uh, by five, you'll see. You hear it? we just been dropped off at the side of the road here because this is where all the fruit bats, the flying foxes, hang out. And those are not leaves. Those are bats. And apparently in like half an hour or so, the sun will go down a little bit further and they'll start flying. And then it will be a very empty tree. Yeah. So we've been told that wind sometimes comes down here under the trees because the baby bats fall down and they get disoriented and they can't survive on the ground. So they have to come. Oh, they're starting. Oh. So apparently the babies will fall down and they, they come and rescue them, rehabilitate them, and then let them go back into the wild. So what do you think? Are we going to join them? Yeah, that would be cool. Go baby bat hunting? Yeah, baby bat hunting. That's good. Wow. Sorry, I'm a little shy. Oh, no! Jason is so good about getting up, essentially, with the sun or first thing in the morning, and I am just not a morning person i never have been but he's always been like that i don't know if we ever change i always think as i get older i'm like oh, i'll become like one of those older people that wakes up at 5 a.m and has coffee and is in bed by eight uh, yeah i'm pretty sure i'm gonna be a night owl till the day i die but considering that we live together on this boat and even when we're not on this boat we are together 24 7 like all the time very little time apart and uh, it's nice to have this little bit of a morning routine where he gets up and he goes and he does his stretches and his yoga or whatever workout he wants to do every morning and then I stay in here almost intentionally just because I kind of like having that 15 to 30 minutes by myself I message friends or I catch up on something and sometimes I just sit in here and do nothing at all or a quick meditation to kind of start the day just because it, this is usually my favorite time of like easing in to the day so different strokes different folks but also i think good for our relationship and maintaining each other being this much together all the time little bits of the difference in our routine i think is 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 good I don't know if that's marriage advice or relationship advice or anything else, but it's what works for us. So just taking a moment to get comfortable, you're <sighs> sitting up or lying down, with the eyes softly focused, just taking a big deep breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. When we left Wynn yesterday, they told us they are releasing a kite and they asked us if we wanted to join. And well, now we're walking down to the mangroves to release this rehabilitated bird. And they're beautiful. We've seen them 
hunting behind us, catching fish. It's, it's pretty cool to see, be a part of. This is very special. He landed on one of the trees over here, but we're not quite sure and they just want to make sure that he's not hanging out on the ground and that he's actually able to fly. He's only been at Wynn for a week because they try really hard to rehabilitate them quickly and release them as fast as possible because they don't want them getting used to being fed and stuff like that. Otherwise, they'll just end up flying right back to Wynn because they'll think, oh, well, this is my home and this is where I get free food. Yeah. Yay! Up in the higher trees. Oh, that is good. Oh, that's great. Feel good to be back in the wild, back in your home. Look at you, right back where you're supposed to be. <gasps> It's um, just after breakfast now. They all come back around lunchtime and check and see if the bird is still in the same place or not. See if he's on the ground. And then they're working with the local indigenous people because they're the ones that protect this land here where the mangroves are. And they will also keep an eye to see if there's any birds hanging out on the ground. Because if they're hanging out on the ground, that's not good. And they'll have to come back and rescue. But so far they said successful flight, exactly what they expected. And they're very happy to have that kite return back to nature. Oh. Success, that's, it's always a good feeling. Man, I remember when we had our little flying fox. It was just for a few days, but it felt so, so good to see him fly off and sad at the same time. But yeah, that's great. As you can imagine, it's a lot to take care of all those animals and of course, Yesterday at the end of the day, they had the government show up with two more snakes and a couple of, what were the birds? Pheasants? Oh, pheasants, yeah, and a couple of pheasants. And they're already maxed out at their current facility. They need more space, which they have secured. They have a whole new plot that is so much bigger that's gonna allow them to build a big aviary so that they can do test flights there, so that they can prepare the birds a little bit better before they release them back into the wild. And then of course, they've got all the animals that can't be released back into the wild because they can't survive. So now they are their forever caretakers and that requires a lot of help from a lot of different people and of course money too. And they need money to build this new facility. So they have started a fundraiser. So I will make sure to link their page uh, down below so that you can check that out a little something to get it started. Or of course, if you find yourself here, then you can go and visit and see the animals and see the work that they're doing for yourself, which I do highly encourage. It's been quite the experience. Watching that bird take off today was, um, yeah, you know, it just gives you all the warm and fuzzies because you're like, they're doing really good work. And it's so nice to see that no matter where you go in the world, you can find people that care. <laughs>